I looked everywhere for the creature Gollum, but the enemy found him first. In the Fellowship of the Ring, Gandalf ensures that the magical ring passes from the possession of Bilbo Baggins to his nephew Frodo. Bilbo then departs his home in Hobbiton and solitarily voyages to Rivendell, whilst Frodo keeps the ring hidden in his home of Bag End for 17 years. Gandalf comes to highly suspect that the ring Bilbo had discovered deep in the Misty Mountains in Gollum's cave was the one ring forged by Sauron which was lost after Isildur had been slain over 3,000 years ago, although he was not certain and did not know how to substantiate his suspicion. So in the year 3001, Gandalf begins to search for the prior possessor of the ring, Gollum. Where are you going? There are some things that I must see to. What things? Questions. Questions that need answering. Suspecting that the jewel is a ring of power, the wizard cautions Frodo to not use it. Departing the Shire, Gandalf unites with Aragorn and together they begin to seek for the creature Gollum. In order to secure the Shire, the Grey Pilgrim requests that the Dunedain who guard the realm of the Hobbits double their watch. And they oblige. After the Ring chose to abandon Gollum for Bilbo, once the Hobbit entered Gollum's cave, the creature was desperate to retrieve his dainty. Sometime after, Bilbo relinquished the ring, Gollum flees his cave and begins to search for his stolen precious. However, since he had never been to the Shire and could not read a map, all he could do was guess where the land of Baggins was located. Since Sauron was now regaining much of his power, all evil beings were being drawn to Mordor. It's likely that this is why Gollum was traveling southeast towards Sauron's pool, as opposed to northwest towards the Shire. This is when Gollum discovers the secret stairs and Shelob's tunnel, which is pivotal knowledge for Frodo and Sam during their quest to destroy the ring. Eventually, Gollum was captured in Mordor and he was immediately interrogated. Up until this point of the story, Sauron was not aware that Gollum ever possessed his ring, although for political reasons, all who entered the land of Mordor were to be questioned and imprisoned. Mordor guarded its realm like a paranoid police state with strict borders which treated intruders as suspicious and potential spies. Therefore, Gollum began to be tortured for information. Revealing little at the beginning of his torment, he would begin to speak of his precious. Sauron would eventually come face to face with the creature and be long inured in the memory of Gollum, who hated the Dark Lord after what he had done to him. And the precious is wanting to go back to him. But we mustn't let him have it. After gaining very useful knowledge from Gollum regarding his possession and dispossession of the ring, he released the tormented creature, ordering his spies to track him. The ring was Sauron's dainty and he knew Gollum would never stop hunting for it. And if he was to obtain the ring again, he wouldn't dare destroy it. To Sauron's demise, the discharge of Gollum would be his greatest mistake, for he was the primary intelligence in aiding Frodo from the borders of Mordor to Mount Doom. In the year 3009, Gandalf with the aid of Aragorn renewed their hunt for the former ring possessor. And for the next eight years, Gandalf and the Dunedain Ranger would continue their search. In the year 3017, after looking everywhere for the creature Gollum, Gandalf finally grows impatient and remembers the wise words of Saruman, half heeded at the time of their dialogue, although now, they were clear in his heart. The nine, the seven, and the three had each their proper gem, not so the one. It was round and unadorned, as if it were one of the lesser rings, but its maker set marks upon it that the skilled, maybe, could still see and read. What the marks were, Saruman did not reveal. Perhaps he did not know 
Gandalf considered the source of the knowledge. With Saruman's alliance with Sauron not yet revealed, the Grey Wizard thought of the only other source where the White Wizard could have come across the information. The only other nerd ring bearer is Sildur. The wizard immediately forsakes the chase of Gollum and rides swiftly to Gondor. Aragorn, meanwhile, understanding the significance of their task and his ancestor's role in the tale of the Ring of Power, keeps attempting to hunt Gollum. The wizard arrives at Minas Tirith and is greeted by Denethor, and this is when he studies the scrolls of Isildur, and from them, he learns that there are intricate markings on the ring, and he discovers how he can potentially make those markings resurface. A secret now that only fire can tell. Facing a long and urgent journey back to the Shire, Gandalf first begins to travel northwards, and from the Galadrim, messages reach him that Aragorn has finally found and captured Gollum, taking him to Mirkwood for safekeeping. So Gandalf detours so he can question Gollum and confirm what he now already suspected to know. Aragorn was desperately aiming to amend the choice of his ancestor, for he believed that Isildur's heir must repair the fault of Isildur. After Gandalf had departed Aragorn for Gondor, the ranger too eventually despaired, beginning his homeward journey. Suddenly by fortune, Strider came across soft marks beside a muddy pool. The trail was fresh, and it was leading away from Mordor. The ranger was not aware that Gollum had just been released from the dungeons of Barad-dûr. Aragorn tracks the marks and spots Gollum, capturing him and receiving nothing from the mouth of the creature aside from bite marks. Travelling from the outskirts of the Dead Marshes to Mirkwood, they travelled 50 days together. Gollum was bound and gagged for the entirety of their voyage, aside from when the ranger would provide him with food and drink. Delivering him to Legolas's father Thranduil, Aragorn parts from Mirkwood and he is glad to be rid of the company of the foul-smelling creature. Before Gandalf arrives, and questions Gollum. The wizard learns that the ring was found in the great river Anduin, nigh of the Gladden fields. He pieces together that Smeagol on his birthday had killed his cousin, Deagle. Smeagol also reveals that he possessed the ring for a long time, many lifespans of his kin. Finally, the wizard learns crucial intelligence, that Gollum had been to Mordor and all that he knew of the ring was forced from him by their foes. Thus, the enemy had known that the ring had been found, and they would be unmercifully scouring Middle-earth for the land known as the Shire, and a hobbit named Baggins. Gandalf had finally questioned Gollum, and the creature possessed vital information for the wizard. After years of searching for the creature so his questions could be answered, the wizard had no doubt in his mind that the ring, now in the care of Frodo in his home of Bag End, was not only a magical ring, it was the One Ring. Hurrying back to the Shire, Gandalf reveals the revelation to Frodo, forever changing the life of the halfling. I wish the ring had never come to me. I wish none of this had happened. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell button, and share this video. By doing what you can to help the channel, you are ensuring that I can keep making videos like this. And to those who tune in every week, I really do appreciate all the support that you do provide. I hope you're having a great day wherever you are. And as always, my Middle Earth friends, hunt on Lee for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode of Lord of the Rings Theory. Embrace the power of the ring.
or embrace your own destruction. Renewed shall be blamed for this broken, the crownless.